Hello everyone, Pally Tub here. Welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. My room is still filthy behind me. Don't look at it. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I already recorded a Kale Thoughts video, and it was so bad. Even for one of my Kale Thoughts videos that I decided to try again. Uh, Kale Thoss is the king of Salami, the she-elf himself. Uh, and easily my worst character in the whole game. Enjoy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give this our best shot. At level one, we are going to go for Mana Addict because I don't know what else to pick at level one. <laughs> you probably shouldn't listen to any of the insight that I have for Kale Thoss because it's all just going to be awful. It's all going to be awful insight. The, the running joke was that... <laughs> okay, so the running joke was that uh, in, in one of the last videos that I played Kale Thoss, I made it very clear that I don't play Kale Thoss. And someone in the comments was like, He said he doesn't play Kale Thoss, but he has the Master skin? Yep. I put myself through ten levels of grueling agony, committed to coming out on top, committed to being a better player, and conquering this just train wreck of a character for me. And I couldn't do it. I brought my win rate up from 30% to 37%, and I think it's fallen a little bit since then. Uh, I have officially retired Kale Thoss, so he is coming out of retirement today. Hopefully, this will be a good game. Kale Thoss's Q ability is Flame Strike. It allows him to deal some area damage uh, at a target location. We can augment this with our Verdant Spheres trait, which we can augment with every one of our abilities, to hit a little bit more of, a da uh, of an area. Damage a little bit more of an area, and it's going to do a little bit more damage as well. Get the regen globe. Beautiful. Our W ability, Living Bomb, is going to put a damage over time effect on a target, and then explode, dealing damage to the target and enemies around said target. We are going to go ahead and throw up the enemy Illidan into the air. The enemy team's Illidan is only account level 20. So uh, we're going to have some interesting match making today. Um, and then my E ability is the Gravity Lapse. I can augment this to um, hit more than, uh, what is it, one person by default and three with the augment, uh, which just lets you get a little bit more crowd control out on the board. Um, I think my problem is with Kale Thoss is that I I go into combat with Baird and Spheres ready. I think I need to be a lot more reactionary with it. Um, I also need to get some more regen globes. Been terrible at that. I probably shouldn't. I mean, I'm good against the Gazlo, but as far as getting regen globes against the Gazlo, that's never going to be easy. Looks like the enemy team going on the offensive, so we're going to go down here. Hopefully our team follows suit. The enemy team's Illidan already on the point. We're just going to hit him with a living bomb and then auto attack him a little bit. We, we basically need to gauge how comfortable he is with Illidan. Illidan, of course, is notoriously hard to play. Uh, so if he is a confident player, then, you know, good on him. Missing all of my abilities there. Uh, Chen going into the entirety of the enemy team is going to be taken down. Uh, probably shouldn't be walking into those by himself. Um, I'm already out of mana, huh? Shit. I was going to go sippy cut, but that's off cooldown. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to auto attack a little bit. And then and then see what they want to do. Now, if we do augment the living bomb, it does make it so that we can cast it without a mana cost. The hook was just used. We're going to be body blocked to all hell. So I'm just going to get out of here. I'm just going to leave. We're going to get dunked a little bit. That's fine. Our Charism complaining that he has five frames per second. That's probably because his latency is so high. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Heroes of the Storm operates on a pretty unique uh, lag system where the characters on your screen will still remain to be in the same spot. Uh, regardless of whether or not you're lagging. So they track the players in real time, but we're going to get another one to level four, but your frame rate will suffer. You can't uh, stream the data to your computer as easily as you would be able to with a normal with a normal latency. Which sucks, actually. I mean, it's there. there's no good solution to that, but I don't know. There, either way, it kind of sucks. I need to get regen globes. I could have gone to the middle to get two and I forgot. So we're just going to grab that one. We have three now. We're going to be regenerating a little bit of mana, not a ton. Uh, the Immortal is making its way down to the bottom lane. I'm going to head down there, provide it with a little bit of support. Uh, our Chen, number one on hero damage right now. 
Yep. That's a thing. Uh, let's see if I can make anything happen here. I did the combo. Did you see? Did you see? He's gonna blow up! I did it! Oh! Oh, that was good. So, the combo for Kael'thas, as far as I understand it, I probably messed it up. What I did was I augmented my E ability, so it would travel through multiple targets. The idea is I wanted to be be completely sure that I was going to crowd control Illidan there. Then I dropped my Q underneath him, and then hit him with the living bomb as well. So yeah, that went well. Uh, the friendly team having a little bit of trouble here. Could not augment that gravity lapse. So we're just going to throw out the living bomb, throw out a Q, throw out another living bomb, and then auto attack some. Oh yeah, walking all over him. Look at it go. At level 7, we are going to go for Fission Bomb, which is going to increase its damage and I think it's Blast Radius, or is it just uh, Living Bomb Explosion Radius and damage by 30%, which is pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, I need to leave. I tried to finish that off. Very out of mana. <laughs> this isn't going well. This isn't going well, ladies and gentlemen. We can... Go ahead and throw out a couple of those. That's about it. The sippy cup is off cooldown, so we can go ahead and grab that. Okay, so this isn't going terrible. I haven't died a ton. Uh, so, history of Kael Thoss. He was added into the game, and I was convinced that Chain Bomb was going to be the best thing ever for him. And it turns out that the majority of the meta shifted to a, um, a Flame Strike focus build, which is your Q ability. Um... And then I didn't like that playstyle, so I continued to do Chain Bomb, and everyone was all like, Penitent, why are you doing Chain Bomb? We're so bad. Because that's how everyone who's negative sounds in my head. Um, then, Blizzard decided, you know what? The Flame Strike build's a little bit too popular. Maybe it's a little bit too strong. We're going to nerf this a little bit. And then everyone went over to Chain Bomb. Chain Bomb is a level 13 talent that allows your Living Bomb to hit a target and then spread to other, like it'll spread the bomb to other targets as well, as well. It is incredibly powerful. I don't know why we're getting this camp when the Immortals are up, but I am now out of mana and I need to go back. But it is incredibly powerful, and uh, the community realized how good it was, realized how to exploit it, which basically was if you ever saw an enemy in the middle of a, of a minion wave like this, you could blow up the minion wave in two casts and they would take the full damage from every single bomb. You could essentially one-shot everyone in the game. So Blizzard changed that too. Chain Bomb now only chains to three total targets, uh, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, looks like the friendly team just focused on pushing that down. I mean, maybe I should defend. It looks like maybe there's only one or two. Yeah. Uh, so let's throw out this. Good. That worked. We scared off stitches a little bit. Okay. We're pushing the enemy team back. As what ends there too, though. So we are walking into a 2v3. Um, we need our team here to help us defend. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in on full attack. Actually, the enemy team isn't there. We see the entire enemy team top. Chen wants to defend the immortal, but there's literally no one there that he needs to defend against. All right, the enemy team now moving in. Illidan on top of me, which is exactly what he should be doing. Can Chen peel for me? The Metamorphosis is coming out, which means they hit level 10 before us. And I'm just going to have to sit there and trade as much damage into him as I can. We need level 10. Chen going to the lane to get that now. I am going to... Oh, do I want to go with Pyroblast versus this team? That might be fun. I'm going to go with the Phoenix because it's the best zoning ultimate. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. And this is one of the best maps to zone your opponents away from something. Phoenix only has a 40 second cooldown, so you can use it all the damn time. And it's going to allow you to uh, throw a bird down on the ground that'll attack everything around it, essentially. You can use this for PvE objectives, like uh, killing off this immortal that's going to be walking towards us, or you can use this versus uh, the enemy team when they're doing fun stuff. Oh, the Ancestral just a little bit too late. Let's go ahead and drop the Phoenix right here. The Phoenix will help us take down this big guy. And uh, once he sh once his shields go down, he is going to turn into a melee unit. And uh, yeah, he actually still does a ton of damage. So we definitely need to be focusing him as much as we can. Uh, the friendly team, however, going after kills. They are going to pick up one on Stitches, but 
I guess the we didn't reciprocate too much damage there. We didn't fall prey to too much damage there. All right, we're good. We're good. We're gonna be fine. Um, now would be a good time to get one of these mercenaries. Typically, if you're wondering, the normal flow of a match usually goes lane objective mercenaries. So now that we dealt with the objective, now's a good time to get mercenaries to push against the enemy team. The strategy does, does change a little bit if you're trying to use mercs to uh, uh, exploit the weaknesses of your enemy team. Oh, a flame strike right in the middle of that. That's going to do some work, and we pick up two kills. One more incoming on that Illidan, and Less and Ancestral goes off. Going to try to control Rhaegar here, dropping the flame strike at his feet. Just using my cooldowns whenever they're off, and then trying to reposition here. Trying not to go crazy, trying not to go in too deep. Uh, let's go ahead and flame strike up here. That's going to hit two people. Uh, the Divine Palm does go out. We do crowd control stitches, so the Divine Palm did not save the monk, but we're going to trade five kills for zero deaths right after an objective. So we're going to push through here pretty strong. Chain Bomb coming out at level 13. One of my favorite talents for Kel'thas. Um, I did mention that I really enjoy Kael'thas' playstyle. I'm just not good at the playstyle. Um, but the, the fact that Chain Bomb is just like... It used to be an explosion of damage on the screen. I always really, really enjoyed that. I don't really know what to expect now with the changes. So this will jump to the three closest enemies not already affected by Chain Bomb. So I can't even blow up this minion wave with it, can I? Uh, kind of. It's just a slower burn than the initial explosion that I'm used to. So that's not terrible. I still don't think that's a bad choice. Um, pushing up against the enemy team now. Uh, we're gonna be... We're gonna be falling back. We're gonna go with our team to get this mercenary camp. We currently have an XP lead, but don't worry. Drama is still in this game because I'm playing Kael'thas and I lose three out of... I win three out of ten games with Kael'thas, so it would really be a miracle if we were to win this one today. All right, let's try. Let's try to deal some damage here. The enemy team actually not on the offensive. Are they dealing with these pushes? I don't know what they're doing. Yes, Illidan, come in on me. It's a trap. I'm ready for you. Damn it. Now I'm not ready for you. Wait 12 seconds, Illidan. All right, Chain Bomb going out. Flame Strike going out as well. Here comes the Phoenix. Uh, whenever I can get in range, dropping on top of the enemy team's Immortal as well. Going to be doing some extra damage there. Stitch is coming back for me. We're going to Flame Strike right under his feet. And that is going to be two people dead for the enemy team. Uh, maybe I can get another Chain Bomb out here. Maybe we don't even need to. I'm going to focus on getting this Immortal down. And that is going to give us even more of a commanding lead versus the enemy team. Beautiful. All right, this bad boy, we need to get these regen globes. I'm not going to forget again because we need this man to return real bad. This bad boy is going to be pushing the bottom lane. So even though I don't have a ton of mana, I am going to try to uh, secure top right now. Um, a phoenix and a couple flame strikes should be enough to do that. But with Illidan here, I am going to have to leave. Uh, we can't. It's so hard to get away from Illidan. He could basically gap close me until the end of time. And there's not much I can do about it. So we're gonna we're gonna let him do Illidan things. We're gonna rejoin our team. They need to know that I'm on the way. So I pinged it. I was gonna type it too, but that's kind of redundant. We are gonna go for Arcane Barrier at level 16. We gain a shield based on our maximum mana. Of course, if I was better at stacking our Q, we would have more mana. Because Mana Addict is not like Conjurer's Pursuit. It increases your maximum mana by 15 whenever we get a region globe. So the better I am at getting stacks, all of a sudden the more defensive I become in the late game. The Phoenix going out. We're going to try to crowd control Illidan. We do just that, but the Ancestral Heal does go off. We're going to use my Mana Barrier because I didn't know what kind of damage they were looking to deal to me. Apparently it wasn't very much. Uh, Flame Strike going out on the enemy team's Rhaegar. We can go ahead and pull... Asmodan into the air, just trying to delay whatever he was planning on doing. Now the Chain Bomb going out on the left side of the screen. The Flame Strike underneath the Stitches is going to secure a kill. And it is looking pretty good that this is going to be a win. That's good. For some reason, in the vast majority of the games that I play Kael'thas in, it ends up being like no supports for either team, no front line at all, and it's just a bunch of assassins on the enemy team. And that's what the, the, the previous one I recorded was. I didn't do a practice game. I wasn't looking to play Kael'thas a little bit more, uh, but fuck. 
Uh, I'm glad that I decided to record another one because that was definitely a much better game, a much more positive game. Even though uh, our um, our charism was was lagging out a little bit for the majority of the beginning of that match, uh, I think we still did a decent job. My damage pretty low. Um, one thing you need to understand about Kael'thas as well is he has always been a character that ramps up into the late game. So if a game ends very early, it's very likely that your damage will not be comparable to that of a Nazebo, perfect example. Uh, but I'm also not a good Kael'thas, so my damage is never going to be comparable to that of a Nazebo. Hope you enjoyed today's video. It wasn't as much of a train wreck as you probably thought it was going to be. Um, I could show you my talents really quick, actually. Mana Addict, Netherwind, Fission Bomb, Phoenix, Chain Bomb, Arcane Barrier, and then at level 20, I would probably just go for uh, Bolt of the Storm. Because why not? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Up next, we have the Queen of Blades. See you all next time.